Historically, deploying software has involved downtime and complicated, time-consuming, and error-prone processes to minimize the possibility of breaking anything, often referred to as the blast radius. The impact of missing even a small issue could result in an outage, causing a poor customer experience, or worse, a lost customer. Armory Continuous Deployments as a Service delivers intelligent deployments that support advanced deployment strategies so developers can focus on building great code rather than deploying it. By automating code deployment across all environments, CD as a Service removes demands on developers as well as reducing the risk of service disruptions due to change failures. It does this by seamlessly integrating pre-production verification tasks with advanced deployment strategies in production. And CD as a Service doesn't require migrating to a new CI-CD platform. It easily plugs into any existing SDLC. Armory Continuous Deployments as a Service is available as a GitHub Action and as a CLI, which can then be called from any of your existing tools like Jenkins, Team City, or other in-house tools. I'm going to start a deployment by running the CLI from a checkout of my Git repository and passing it the definition of my deployment. Armory starts my deployment and provides me with a URL that I can use to view and interact with my deployment. Here I can see a high-level overview of how my code is reaching each of my environments. As you can see, my development environment is currently updating. Once it finishes, staging and InfoSec will update, followed by production environments. All environments except the two production environments are using a simple rolling update. Once staging is deployed, it will trigger a webhook starting my integration tests within GitHub Actions. The production environments will only be deployed if these tests pass. Webhooks can be leveraged to integrate all of your existing automation into your deployments. Similarly, InfoSec is running a security scanner in GitHub Actions that must also pass before production is deployed. Once they finish, production will wait for a manual approval before deploying. My three production environments are each leveraging different advanced strategies to minimize the risk of their deployments. Once our other environments finish deploying, we will walk through these strategies in detail. Now that the other environments are deployed, let's approve our prod EU environments deployment. This environment is using a blue-green deployment strategy. We can click into the environment for more detail on how its deployment is progressing. The environment-specific status UI is split into two. On the left, I can see a high-level status of what's going on in my deployment. This shows me the current progress. I can see that the green version is currently deploying and that once it finishes, we are going to run an automated canary analysis on it. On the right-hand side, I can see more details, such as that there are two different microservices being deployed together within this single application. Now that the automated analysis completed successfully, we can see the green version is now receiving 100% of the traffic. After redirecting traffic, we started an automated metric analysis and used webhooks to trigger a test suite that checked our logs for errors. If either failed, we would have automatically rolled back the change. Even with both passing, we can keep the blue version around for a while to allow instant rollbacks. When ready, I can hit Approve and Continue to scale down the old version. My blue-green strategy will now shut down the old version, finishing my deployment. Let's take a look at the other production environments which are using canary strategies. A canary strategy is a controlled process allowing you to gradually deploy a new version of code and incrementally increase the percentage of traffic reaching it. We support two methods of routing canary traffic to the new version. In this case, the new version is getting 25% of traffic by scaling the number of pods running between the two versions. In the details on the right, you can watch the pod scale up and down as our deployment processes. This allows you to implement a canary strategy on any cluster, but for certain applications, this may be slow since each pod scales independently. Alternatively, we also support traffic management via SMI compliant service meshes like Linkerd. Let's see what that looks like. Here we are using a surface mesh to redirect traffic between the two versions without having to control the number of pods to ensure the accurate traffic split between the two versions. This allows us to send as little as 1% of our production traffic to the new version, regardless of how many pods it uses. At this point, we are running an automated canary analysis against our metric provider. When it passes, we will also check our logs for errors. When both pass, the traffic will then scale to the next step, which is 50%.
The deployment is now running an automated analysis which has been configured to fail. We can see that the automated analysis failed because a particular metric exceeded its thresholds. We can also see the metric values that came back from the metric provider, and how they compare to the thresholds. If desired, we can easily roll this environment back to the prior version and mitigate any risk from our new application version. When I roll back, Armory Continuous Deployments as a Service restores the old version to full capacity and sends 100% of traffic to it. Since the old version is handling all traffic, the new version spins back down. With that, my production environment is fully rolled back and any negative impact of my deployment has been mitigated. Throughout this demo, every manual step can also be fully automated. For example, Canary Analysis can be set to automatically roll back instead of waiting for a manual approval. That is the core functionality offered by CD as a Service. Now let's take a look at how this is configured. The deployment configuration is defined in a YAML format. We have specified that we are deploying an application called Potato Facts. In the target section, we define the environments to which we are deploying, as well as any rules for those environments. CD as a Service allows you to declare rules that must be met for a particular environment to be deployed. This is why the production environment did not start deploying until after the staging and InfoSec environments finished successfully, and after a manual approval had occurred. The manifest section specifies what manifests we are deploying. By default, all manifests go to all environments, but if you have environment-specific manifests such as configuration maps, they can be deployed to only specific environments. The strategies section specifies how an environment is deployed. For our Canary strategy, we started by sending 25% of traffic to the new version. We then ran an automated analysis. If it passes, we increase traffic to 50% and run another automated analysis before finally increasing traffic to 100%. For the blue-green strategy, you can specify one or more constraints that need to pass before traffic will be redirected. And similarly, specify one or more constraints that need to pass before we shut down the old version. For the automated analysis, these queries are just written in the metric provider query language, in this case Prometheus. We also currently support Datadog and New Relic as metric providers. This allows you to easily copy your existing queries from your metric provider and use them for this automated analysis. When using an SMI traffic manager for Canary, we define the names of the incoming services from which traffic should be routed. Similar configuration is also provided for blue-green deployments in order to expose the new version via a preview URL before routing production traffic to it. Each webhook definition has a unique name that is used to reference it. The webhooks provide a simple way to call any REST API. Here we specify the URL of the API that we are calling. In this case, we are triggering a GitHub Actions workflow through the GitHub Actions Dispatch API. We are passing our GitHub token in an authorization header to authenticate with GitHub. We read this token from a secure secret store. Here we specify the body of the API call. In this case, it specifies the name of the GitHub Actions workflow that we are triggering. It also provides a URL that GitHub Actions will call back when completed to let our deployment know whether it succeeded or failed. We've shown you Armory Continuous Deployments as a Service, which allows you to simplify deployments to multiple environments, leverage advanced deployment strategies to limit the blast radius, and provide rollbacks as easy as a single click. To give it a try, sign up at go.armory.io slash sign up.